from the most watched station in Central Texas. This is KWTX News 10. Today marks the 25th anniversary of the deadly Branch Davidian siege at an area about 15 miles outside of Waco called Mount Carmel. Several ATF agents, men, women, and children were killed in that 51-day standoff that captured the world's attention back in 1993. KWTX had the only video camera on the scene when everything broke out, and now 25 years later, family and friends of those who died are remembering the lives that are lost. We have team coverage from across Central Texas. News 10's Ryan Henson is at the Texas Rangers Museum where we know that family members of those ATF agents that were killed in the raid are gathering for a private memorial. News 10's Pete Sousa is at Mount Carmel where that 51-day standoff took place. Ryan, we're going to start with you. It has been 25 years since that deadly raid that left several ATF agents dead. Tell us what's happening at the Texas Ranger Museum behind you. Well, Julie, it's a private event like you mentioned, also an emotional one as well. When we were up closer towards the back where people were gathering, people were war welcoming each other with warm hugs, warm handshakes. A lot of people I'm sure haven't seen each other in many years, so definitely an emotional event. But everyone's gathered here to honor those four ATF agents who died during that raid 25 years ago. Stephen Willis, Conway LeBleu, Robert Williams and Todd, and Todd McKeon are being honored this afternoon. And the lot, as you can see just a couple of minutes ago, is packed behind me, although several people have already left. The event started around 10.30. It's about noon now, so some people have already pulled out for the afternoon. So a lot of people here just to offer their support to those law enforcement agents and a lot of lo local law enforcement agents still here as well. We've seen Marina, Hewitt, a lot of Waco PD and the McClendon County Sheriff's Office uh, cars in the parking lot as well. So a lot of support from across the law enforcement community from near and far. We're going to continue team coverage throughout the day and throughout the day and this show as well. So Julie, back to you. Now, Ryan, we know, uh, no doubt, this is actually the first time a lot of those people that were directly uh, involved there uh, have been back to the Waco area, so we'll be keeping a close eye on that. Right now, we want to go to Pete Sousa, who is live at Mount Carmel, where that 51-day standoff took place 25 years ago, which is hard to believe. So, Pete, is there anything happening out there today? Yeah, Julie, there is some stuff happening. It's going on behind me, but being out here today, there's clouds hovering above, and for a lot of people out here today, some of those behind me, there have literally been clouds covering over this place for 25 years since that fateful day in 1993. I'm going to step out of the way right now so you can kind of get a look at what's going on. You see some of the people right there. One of those women over there, she's actually one of the caretakers right now out here at what used to be the Branch Davidian compound. You see some other people right there. They are tourists. Tourists have actually stopped by. One couple I actually spoke to, they were actually from New York. They said they just wanted to come out here and kind of get a feel as to what was going on. That caretaker I talked to, her husband has been out here since the 70s, and I asked her what her feeling was about the place like this and what happened that day. She said there are mixed emotions for her. She said some rights on, on the Davidian side and some wrongs on the Davidian side, and the same thing for the ATF and the officials. She felt like, you know, there were wrongs on both sides. Talking to her today, she said there's nothing formal planned out here but with the emotion, the raw emotion, I, I can't imagine that could be harnessed in any way. Live at the new Mount Carmel, Pete Souza. Back to you, Julie. All right, Pete, thanks so much. We will continue our Branch Davidian coverage tonight coming up at 5, 6, 9, and 10 o'clock. And then coming up tonight at 10 o'clock as well, News 10's Rissa Shaw will be sitting down with author Robert Darden, a journalism professor over at Baylor. He has interviewed people on every side of this standoff. That includes survivors, law enforcement, members of the media, and medical examiners. He talks to KWTX about takeaways from the tragedy and if he thinks history could ever repeat, him, repeat itself. That's coming up tonight at 10 o'clock. All right, breaking right now out of Waco, McLennan County District Attorney Abel Reyna has just wrapped up a press conference. News 10's John Carroll was there, and John, apparently Reyna announced something new in the Twin Peaks cases. Uh, he did, uh, Julie. I'm standing here actually in uh, Abel Reyna's office because just a few moments ago, the four local TV stations uh, were in front of him as he held a press conference and announced once again he would be dismissing 13 more Twin Peaks cases and refusing to prosecute 
24 other of those Twin Peaks cases. Now, Julie, that brings a total to 58 cases that will be dismissed or will not be prosecuted in the Twin Peaks cases. And he says he continues to review the situation to determine if more cases will be dismissed or refuse to be tried in the days to come. He said, while it's been said, quote, that my detractors, that this is an effort to avoid taking the stand at a hearing he was supposed to testify at tomorrow, he says that could be nothing further from the truth. I would remind the public that I've already taken the stand in two of these matters. Uh, a federal case that is underway with a Twin Peaks, a bandito, not a Twin Peaks, but a bandito, the assistant district attorney was there yesterday and was able to report back to Rana some new information, and he says he continues to work with the Twin Peaks defense attorneys to determine if there's any more in situations in which he should be dismissing cases so he can get down to the key cases that he wants to try. He says, I'm not concerned with hearings and in testifying. Let's listen briefly to what he said today. Today, we will be presenting 13 additional cases for dismissal and refusing 24 cases for prosecution, bringing the total number to 58 disposed cases in the Twin Peaks matter. Again, these dismissals should not be considered an exoneration of the defendants. Okay, Julie, what we can tell you back here at Abel Rayner's office is that uh, he did appear in a different manner uh, today before the four TV stations, and he opened up and answered any and all questions, not hiding from any question that he was uh, uh, facing at this time, and he said, it's not political what the decisions I'm making right now. The decisions he did make today are six days before the election. Reporting live at the McLennan County Courthouse, actually here in the DA's office, John Carroll, KWTX News 10. All right, thank you, John, for much more on this breaking story. You can download our free app in your phone's app store. Just search KWTX. You can also head to our website, kwtx.com, and our Facebook and Twitter pages as well. In other news today, a 12-year-old Colleen ISD student is arrested overnight. School officials say that she made a terroristic threat on social media, causing hundreds of parents to panic. We heard from many of you ourselves. KISD superintendent says the threats were made throughout the week. We know that the student attends Roy J. Smith Middle School. Superintendent John Kraft says that school officials fielded hundreds of phone calls from concerned parents over the last several days. A search warrant was later issued and the student was arrested at her home. She is being charged with making terroristic threats. Well, it's been a full day of news so far, but something that definitely affects everyone across Central Texas, no doubt about that, is weather. The skies are looking pretty great today. Brian Gurm is joining us now with more. So, Brian, any rain in the forecast? There is, Julie, and it looks like, though, it'll be later in the day. Most of today on our Wednesday, especially during the afternoon hours, should remain rain-free and just warm and humid. Take a look at our current temperatures, especially to the east and southeast. Middle and upper 70s at this hour, and the dew points in the middle and upper 60s, so very humid air in place. And a wider view of the state of Texas, we do have some drier air out to the west near the Texas Panhandle. This will be a dry line that will continue to push to the east through the day today. This was a first round of activity through North Texas earlier today, but more activity expected to increase to our west, and that's what we're going to be keeping an eye on, as well as the potential for severe storms later tonight. But Julie, I'll have more on that in just about 10 minutes. All right, thank you, Brian. Happening right now, crews are still trying to repair a hole in the northbound lanes of I-35 in Waco. This is at mile marker 335 between University Parks Drive and Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. We know that concrete has been poured, but it will take several days to dry. TxDOT has listed a way to get around that traffic backup. You can head to our website at kwtx.com. Click on the Find It button to find out. We've got a lot more news coming up in the rest of this newscast, but in the meantime, be sure to check out kwtx.com for the very latest on your news and weather across Central Texas and again download our free app in your phone's app store for continuing coverage of the Branch Davidian siege that we're marking today 25 years later.